Okay, check this point out. Keep your eyes on Simone Jardim. They're playing Vivian Glosman and Alex Strong. Paris Todd switches sides and watch this. Watch Simone. Slams her chair. Did you see that? Let's check that out one more time. Tries to poach. Gets caught on the other side and she's in trouble. Misses it and then slam. The camera cuts away, but she slams her chair a few more times. What is that all about? Why was she so mad? It was a crazy match. We're going to talk all about it. Welcome to the Sorry Not Sorry Pickleball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Kelly. This week, we're going to talk about the APP SunMed Atlanta Metro Open. We had an awesome weekend of APP Pickleball. There was a lot of close matches. Also, a lot of lopsided matches. We even had some drama regarding injuries. I can't wait to get into this one, but before we do, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and leave a comment on what you thought about this weekend. Share this with your friends if you're trying to get them into pro pickleball so you have somebody to talk to about it. And also don't forget, you can support this show by checking out the Etsy store. Got a lot of cool different shirts that you can get. Sorry Not Sorry shirts, partner body bag winner off the net shirts. Oh, and how can I forget? Santa Monica Mouth Breather shirts. My favorite. They're so comfy. Go ahead and grab one of those to help. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. This is the new and improved forgiveness. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> forgiveness. I'm not sorry I took the money. <laughs> All right, first off, let's talk women's singles. We had Megan Fudge taking on Judith Castillo. Megan Fudge looking like she's in a gang. The Bloods. Blood gang. So whoop. I don't know. Is that even a thing? Do people say that? I listened to too much Lil Wayne as a kid. Am I going to get assassinated for doing that now? Anyways, Megan Fudge, she looked really good in this gold medal match. She hasn't won a gold medal in singles this year yet, and you could tell she really wanted this one. And honestly, let's be real here. She's got a pretty good chance if she's playing Judith Castillo. Nothing against Judith. She's pretty good. But I would have bet money that Megan Fudge would take this one. She's got a 5-0 lead right here. Start the match off. It just felt like all match Judith Castillo was just running back and forth. She must have been exhausted after this one. I mean, you could even see on this point right here, Megan Fudge just loves chilling on the baseline. That's kind of her move. Seems like she's never really that eager to come up to the kitchen line. And I mean, just watch this. All over the place. Judah Castillo just tracking all these down. Oh, even gets that one, but can't get it over the net. So Megan Fudge, she still has a 7-1 lead. Check this point out. It's 8-1 now. Megan Fudge got a sizable lead. And Judah Castillo just all over the place getting everything. And then watch what happens here. Keep an eye on the ball. Megan Fudge is going to hit one down the line. Looks clearly out, right? Judith had a great look on it. And the ref overturns it. And it's like, wait, what? She's like, you got to be kidding me. Let's take another look. Watch this replay. Ball is clearly out. That could not be more out. And look, Judith Castillo is looking right at it. She's got a good angle. These refs were so terrible all weekend. You know, it's one thing to not see a call, and that would make me still be like, ah, oh, come on, terrible ref. How did you not see that? But they're, like, overturning these calls as if they know 100%. I mean, gosh, look at this. That is so far out. Real quick, let's flash back to Thursday. So, as you may already know, APP always decides to not stream Singles Day on Thursday or Mixed Doubles Day on Friday, which leaves us all just waiting to see the results on paper. Now, there was this interesting tweet from Megan Fudge. She said, four overrules in a match, not to mention the ones the refs couldn't 100% clearly overturn. Consequences have to be put in place. Nonetheless, got past her and get to play for gold on Sunday. So she's talking about Salome Davidze. And we all know that Salome Davidze is known for her terrible line calls. So after seeing this on Thursday, I think a lot of people were like, yeah, f Salome. She's always calling out when it was clearly in. Definitely gave the benefit of the doubt to Megan Fudge. But then you see things like this 
And it really just destroys the credibility of the refs. Now, I don't really want to take the side of Salome Davice in that story, so I'm just going to pretend like the refs were on fire that day and doing well. But man, this Sunday, the refs were not doing well. Thankfully, that missed call didn't really impact the game too much. Fudge is going to take this one 11-3. So game two, a little bit of a different story than game one. Castillo actually showed up. She made this one close. It was tied 5-5, and then Castillo got a three-point lead here. It's now 8-5. Look at these gets from her. Oh, my goodness. She's all over the place, just getting everything, just putting it back for one more shot. Unfortunately, can't finish it, but still. So 9-7 now. Castillo's lead shrinking. Watch this play right here. Castillo's going to hit a ball in the corner, and Megan Fudge calls it out. Castillo's like, I don't know. Ref confirms that was out. Let's take a look at this one. And it is clearly in. You've got to be kidding me. Gosh, I mean, look, it's tough to make those calls, especially, you know, for Megan Fudge, like kind of right on top of it, just for the ref to confirm it too. I mean, if the ref didn't see it, you know, she just got to go with the call that Fudge gave. And that's all you could do there. But, man, it is just so frustrating that they don't even have challenges here in the APP. Because if she did challenge that one, she would have won it for sure. So still 9-7 here. And Megan Fudge has just been getting real frustrated this whole game too here. I mean, even just watch what happens after this point. Castillo's going to win it. But then watch Megan Fudge. That was nice, right? <laughs> she looks at her husband. She's like, that was nice, right? Yeah, she did good. It's a good shot. And so game number two... It's going to go to Judith Castillo. She's able to pull it off. We're going to game three. So third game, looking a lot like that first game. Judith Castillo already down 3-0. Megan Fudge getting hot. I don't know. Did she just like that side? <laughs> Judith Castillo so pissed, just screaming. Paddle slam. Calls a timeout and screams into her jacket. It cuts away, but... Right as she cuts away, she is just screaming in there. I wonder what she said. Probably something in Spanish. Oh, she's mad. How could you not be? Obviously, you played a great game, too. You figured something out, and then you just let it slip. Down 4-0. She needs more of that purple drink. So it's 5 nothing now. Megan Fudge is just in control. Look at that shot. Oh, Judah Castillo is just exhausted at this point. Just falling over. So fast forward, Megan Fudge has got an 8-1 lead. This one is looking hopeless. Oh, and Castillo pissed. Slaps her paddle on the side fence there. Man, I could just relate to this so much. Just getting that upset. If I'm ever slamming my paddle like this, there is no coming back. I have just given up the game mentally. It's 9-1 now. And man, Castillo is super athletic. I mean, just look at all these gets that she has. And Megan Fudge is just... Putting it back. And there's nothing Castillo could do, though, despite how quick she is on the court. Fudge just finds the right spot and now gets a 10-1 lead. And so Fudge is going to win this one 11-1, which is going to mean we're going to a tiebreaker match. A game to 15 to decide it. So here we go, game to 15. I thought this point was interesting on the subject of the refs screwing up calls. Look at this shot. Castillo's going to call that out. Fudge looks to the ref like, hey, can you overturn that one? The ref says, I couldn't see it. Sorry. And I don't know. Was it that close? Let's check it out. This ball is for sure out. Good call on Castillo. It's hilarious to me that that other ball that the ref called in was way more out than that one. And on that one, she's like, yeah, I don't know. Could go either way. Meanwhile, it's like a foot out. And she's like, yep, I saw it definitively. That was in. So Castillo ends up getting ahead 7-3. to three. She goes on a little run here. Watch this point. She was dialed in here. Look how close some of these shots get to the net. Right here. Backhand. Ooh, right over it. And then forehand. Right over it. And then watch this shot. Oh, what an angle. But it's caught by Fudge, but not twice. Castillo's pumped. Those were all good shots. And finally, she gets one to go over. Even Megan Fudge is like, yep, that was good. So Castillo is going to get a huge lead here. It's already 9-3, to three, and then she hits this shot. 10-3 to three now. Castillo's looking good in this tiebreaker. Is she going to get a gold? So Fudge gets a few points. She's just down 10-5 now. And watch what happens after this play. Oh, she's right there. She gets so pissed. Stupid paddle. Face to face at the kitchen. And oh, she just misses the overhead. She's like, I got this. No, I don't. Stupid paddle. 
So watch this sequence here between these next two points. Fudge down 5'11", and she's going to hit a shot onto the left side here. And watch this. Castillo calls it out. The ref goes, nope, that was in. That was in. Looked very close. Castillo doesn't really argue too much. Let's see the replay. Not the best replay angle, but I don't know. I mean, that looks in from that little shot, and Fudge is just getting so tired of this. She's like, every match I play, all these terrible calls back and forth. And then watch what happens after this point right here. Megan Fudge is still pissed. They just call every ball out. 100% it's not going to get overruled. She just talks to herself, has full conversations. I love it. Clearly, she was just still thinking about that. She could not focus. And so I think this really fired up Fudge. But man, Castillo was just feeling it. I don't know what was in that purple drink of hers, but she's got a ton of energy. Just look at all these guests just running all over the place. How does she get to those? Even that one she almost got. Almost died in the middle of it. So Fudge crawls her way back. It's 11 to 10 now, just a one point lead. It was a seven point lead at one point. And look at her just keep battling, just making Castillo run. Oh, and Castillo just slipping and sliding all over the court. So it's 11 11 now, and the ref drama continues. Look at that one. That's a close call. Can't see it because Megan Fudge is in the way. Megan Fudge calls it out, the ref confirms it. And I don't know, that one looks in. I think that's a bad call by Fudge. And I guess Castillo was showing a little bit of frustration on her body language. And Megan Fudge just cannot let it go again. Watch what happens here. Fudge is going to hit this one out of bounds. And then look what she says. <laughs> I told you not to do that. I wasn't in. It's not my job. She went into mom mode there. I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. You're not allowed to go out when it's dark out. So we got a match here. It's 13-13. Megan Fudge playing such good D at the line. And she smacks one and puts it away. And she's going to get up 14-13 now. So Megan Fudge, match point on her paddle. Is she going to be able to put this one away? Judah Castillo just running around like she's good at. Megan Fudge trying to put one away to win it, but she can't seem to get it in. Finally, she does. And she wins her first gold medal for women's singles. All right, next up, let's talk men's singles. We had Roscoe Bellamy, the son of Beth Bellamy, making his way to the gold medal match, and he's playing Jonathan Medina Alvarez, who we did see in a gold medal match earlier in the year. Always fun when we got two newish faces in the gold medal match. It's better than like Hunter versus Yates Johnson. So Medina Alvarez quickly got a 5-0 lead, but this game got pretty close. It's 6-5 here. Watch this serve. Clearly out. And the ref overturns it. Oh my gosh. So it's not even just one ref. It's like all APP refs that suck today. Bellamy's like, how? Can I challenge that? Anything. He just cannot believe it. Us at home, we're gifted with like the best angle on this thing. Ball in, please. <laughs> the ref's like, come on, the ball's in, let's go. Hurry the <laughs> up. Tell me so mad. I mean, watch how egregious this is. Way out. He's like, what? How did he possibly see that in? It was about that much. He's right. That is an accurate measure. It was like that much. I feel like Medina Alvarez clearly saw that that was out too and just was like, mm, I'm not gonna, the ref overturned it. Maybe I didn't see it. Sorry, I got sunglasses on. I can't really see that well. So Medina Alvarez up by two here, eight, six. And we got another controversial call. Bellamy's like, come on, that is in. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> ref says out at first. Almost like a Freudian slip. And Medina Alvarez is like, it's out. I don't know what to tell you. They called it out. Come on, man. And so game one is going to go to Medina Alvarez. He's going to win this 11-6. to six. So game two, Medina Alvarez up by one. It's 4-3. to three. And watch this amazing shot from Bellamy. Gets the ATP. The backhand with the wall right there. That is such a tough shot when he's going that fast. To slow down like that, hit it backhand, and so inbounds. He is not taking a chance with these refs. How did he even stop moving? Close. 
just filthy. Unbelievable Smash. shot. That was probably the shot of the weekend. So Bellamy gets a one-point lead here. Watch this. He overcommits. Has to do a tweener. And then actually gets that ball right there. But Medina Alvarez is able to put it away. So we got a 9-9 game here. Super close. And Bellamy's shot. Oh, my goodness. It is a close one. Bellamy is certain that's in. Another look at it here. Just hear him scream at the refs. That is close. He's saying it's not close. That is pretty close. It does look out by a sliver. The bottom of the ball looks like it's touching blue. At least it's close enough to not overturn. And so Medina Alvarez with championship point on his paddle puts one in. And look at him celebrate. <laughs> he is elated. He looks like this tough dude and then celebrates like a child. He looks like a little kid that just got brought to Disneyland and didn't even know he was going, yes, I'm here. Oh yeah, bro, good game. Yeah, toughness, grit. I got my sunglasses on. This dude is high on ecstasy, look at him. Yeah, I can feel it. Uh. And so Medina Alvarez is gonna win the gold medal for men's singles. All right, next up, let's talk mixed doubles. We had Andre Diascu coming off an MLP championship. Teams up with Susanna Barr, and they're taking on Hunter Johnson and Paris Todd. This match was actually a great one. Kind of a bummer that it was on CBS Sports Network, but I guess if they're going to put a match on there to try to get people to get into pickleball, this was a good one to put on there. You can see Paris Todd and Hunter Johnson looking good. They tie this one up 4-4. So Todd and Johnson up by a point here, 7-6. Watch this play from Paris Todd. Ernie on the backhand. Now that's a good shot off of Diascu. Bam. Just narrowly avoids hitting the net there. So still a one-point lead for Todd and Johnson. Up 8-7 to seven now. And Paris Todd is just hitting all the coolest shots. Watch this one. ATP. Terrible camera angle to see that one, but I promise she hit it. Let's see that one again. Paris Todd looks like a very easy ATP. Man, she makes it look so simple. So tie game, 8-8. Eight, eight. This one is just staying locked tight. And watch this point. We're going to get into an awesome firefight here. In just a second. Here we go. Let's get into it. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to put it away? Woo! Todd and Johnson up 1.98 now. So Susanna Barr and Andre Dayescu, they're going to win this first game. 11 to 9. What a great match. Paris Todd just walking away. No paddle test for her. Must be kind of awkward to explain for somebody that's just watching pickleball for the first time. Is she pissed? No, she just does that. Look, I get the whole no paddle tap thing because it looks weird for people just watching, but this has got to look weirder, right? All three players doing it and one doesn't. <laughs> Like, either everybody do it or everybody don't do it. The, like, half or I guess 25% of the players not doing it, that looks really weird. So 7-4 to four here. We got another controversy with the call. Watch this one. This one's very close. Ref confirms that was out. Andre Dayesk is like, you've got to be kidding me. Looked in. I mean, if Chad is saying that that was in... I just feel like it at least deserves a replay for us at home. But I don't know. Maybe because they're on CBS Sports, they're like, mm, just don't show the replay. We don't even want to see it. Just leave it alone. So 10-7, to 7, Paris Todd and Hunter Johnson, they got game point on their paddle. Can they tie this one up one-to-one? -one? And they're going to do it. They end up taking game two. And look at this. No paddle tap at all. He's like, I, I meant to, but I just was so far away. I'll put my hand up for you. So Diescu and Barr were up 3-0 to start game three. But then Hunter and Paris came back. They get this one 4-3 now into a timeout. So Barr and Diescu, they're crawling their way back, just down by a point. And look at the Ernie. Oh, and Paris Todd almost defends it back in bounds. That was a sketchy one. It's tied 6-6 now. So 6-6 six, six right here. Look at this. ATP. Not the cleanest, but still a solid ATP. Gets off the net. Trickles out wide. And he puts it away with the backhand. So tight game here. 7-6. to six. Bar and Diescu have a one-point lead. Watch this battle. Diescu with a crazy get. Oh, another one. 
Then Susanna gets one of her own. Oh my god, Diasco is just... How is he getting these? Gets the lob to get in. Stretches almost falls in the kitchen. Oh, the Burt from Hunter Johnson. They better win this point. Susanna Barr slams it home. They win the point. What a battle. That was the point of the game for sure. Game three to take a two-point lead. This game had so many fun points. I mean, even this one right here. Barr and Diescu got a one-point lead. It's eight to seven. And watch Hunter Johnson trying to play the kitchen by himself, spinning around oh. into the net. So 8-7 for Barn Diescu. Watch this from Diescu. Oh, does a little matrix move to avoid the net there. That was a close one. But they get it to 9-7 off the Ernie. So Paris Todd and Hunter Johnson, they end up coming back. They got a one-point lead here, 10-9. Championship point on their paddle. Are they going to be able to do it? Little bit of dinking, and Susanna Barr can't get it over. And they get the gold medal. Hunter Johnson and Paris Todd are your mixed doubles champions for this Sunday in Atlanta. Oh, now they could kiss in public, as we all know. All right, let's talk men's doubles. We had Greg Dow and Anderson Scarpa making their way to the gold medal match on Sunday, taking on Rob Nunnery and Andre Diescu. If Dow and Scarpa could win this, that is a legitimate win against definitely the best men's doubles team. Uh, and I got to be honest, they didn't have any shot at this. Honestly, not a whole lot to show from this match. They got their butts whooped. It was 4-0 here. Dow just tossing the hat back. He's like, I'm in go mode. Uh, but it wasn't good enough. Watch Dow here. His hat falls off in the middle of it. He just tosses it back. If he won that point, that would have been sick. And so Rob Nunnery and Andre Deescu, they're going to take this first game 11-0. They got pickled on national TV. Oh, that is rough. But it can't get worse, right? It does. If you don't know what happened after this game, I want you to just take a guess in your head right now. If I tell you that game two was even worse, what do you think the score is going to look like? What you're thinking right now, that's not possible. It is. Watch what happened here. Second game. I mean, Rob and Andre Diescu just looking like they're playing the best pickleball of their life here. They could not make a mistake. I mean, even just watch this. Greg Dow was doing pretty good, you know, punching balls in there. But Rob is just taking everything that he's giving them. And they win the point. What a reset from him. And so it's 4 nothing here. And then, oh, 5 nothing. Dow's pissed. Drop the paddle. Walk off. Hands on the hips. What do we do, Scarpa? What do we do? Second game. It's six to zero. Greg Dow pops one up and watch out! Oh my god. Thank God he got a paddle up. Greg Dow almost just got murdered. Watch this. Pops it up and he's just like, oh boy. Oh my gosh. Just fires it right into his gut. <laughs> and Dow's just like, yeah, let's get the hell out of here. I need a timeout, Dow, as if that'll help. <laughs> Dow is like, I cannot believe this, dude. You've got to be kidding me. This is the face of, oh, my God, all my friends and family are watching me on TV right now. The beatdown continues. It's 8-0 here, and Diascu's just having fun at this point. Ernie right at Dow. And Dow's just like, what do I do? Oh. This is what it would be like if I played pro. I mean, this is what it's like when I play against a 3-5. Dow can't get anything to get in. And so it's 10-0 going for the double pickle in the gold medal match. And Dow and Scarpa are actually going to put one away. They get the serve back. Yeah, he's like, come on, crowd, cheer for me. They get, they, get they, they start screaming. Yeah, good stuff. You got the serve back. So can they do it? Can they get a point? Come on, just get one. And nope, in the net. Second serve, long. <laughs> and there goes their chance. And so 10-0, championship point for Nunnery and Diascu. Can they put it away and double pickle them? Let's see. You just have to be rooting for down Scarp on this. Like, just get a point. Come on, battle. 
Oh, and Dow can't hang. And they double pickle them on Sunday in the gold medal match. Unbelievable. When has that ever happened? Just look at the body language here. They're just so bummed. Oh, God. These loser interviews are just so cringy for this reason. Thousand yard stare from Dow. Yeah, silver medal. Ooh. We deserve it, right? Thank you, crowd. Three people clapping. Scarpa USA. Not exactly the time to brag about that. Andre Deescu. Best hand-eye coordination ever, right? Oh, drop the paddle. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and so Rob Nunnery and Andre Deescu, they get the gold medal for men's doubles. All right, let's talk women's doubles. We had Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge taking on Simone Jardim and Paris Todd. Simone and Paris, they are definitely the clear favorites in this one, although Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge, they have won a gold in women's doubles. But I don't think it was against Simone in Paris. So this would be interesting if they could pull this off. So before we talk about this match, we got to rewind to the day before on Saturday. So Simone in Paris, they were taking on Vivian Glosman and Alex Trong in the winner's bracket final. They've got match point on their paddle. And look at that. She just gets out of the way and lets Alex Trong get that one right on the line to keep them alive. So they got a sizable lead still, so they probably weren't panicking too hard. But on this point, everything changed, possibly for Simone Jarjim's career. Watch what happens. A ball gets put in the middle, and they both smack it at the same time. Doesn't look like much in the middle of this point. But look at Simone. She checks out her hand. She's like, ow, that kind of hurt. Oh, look at that. She definitely got hit hard by Paris' paddle. So 10-6, Simone hits one wide. It looks like it's affecting her. It's now 10-7. Simone walks away. They call a timeout. She's looking at her hand. Definitely something is up with it. Got to be injured pretty badly. She is really in pain for sure. Now, remember, they were up 10-4, to letting this one slip a little bit. This is their sixth attempt at match point. And this is just where Simone gets real frustrated. Look at this. Alex Strong and Vivian Glossman just smacking them home, and Simone smacks her chair. She is just so upset. I mean, she's got to be in pain, and also just the frustration of just losing so many match points in a row. Strong telling Viv, keep the pressure on right now. Looks like Paris is like, do you want to call a timeout? Are you good? And I imagine she's like, no, let's just finish this right here. And so Paris and Simone really battling to just finish this one off. Simone's just at the front line. A little bit of an eye formation there. Simone can't finish it. Alex Strong screaming in her face. Simone's just so upset. Just tosses the hat away. It's now 10-8. Simone just looks gassed. Simone has heart. I mean, she is just hitting the ball so hard here but then watch another middle ball and Simone's just like you gotta be kidding me her arms just drop to her side like again Paris come on she looks like she's about to cry she's like I'm in so much pain you keep smacking my hand so they get an 11-10 lead it was 10-4 to they scored seven straight points Simone is like I cannot believe this she just like can't even focus on this she's like thank you for getting me ice and so somehow Paris and Simone, they end up pulling it together. It's 12-11 here. Championship point on their paddle again. And Simone's going to turn and let this one go. And it's out of bounds. Kind of an awkward ending. Alex Trong is like, yeah, I'm not paddle tapping you guys. I don't know what that's all about. So awkward. She's like, I'm just going to stay here frozen. They're like, paddle tap? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, are you going to come over here? All right, whatever. They're so excited now. She's like, look at my hand. It's huge. I can't even feel it. So honestly, shout out to Simone for pulling it through and winning that match after that happened. That must have been not only frustrating, but a ton of pain in her hand, her playing hand. It's not just like it's her left hand that she doesn't use. That is her hand that she swings with. But man, this was one of the saddest post-game interviews ever. Listen to what she said after this. Um, honestly, I've, I've, I know I'm getting too old and losing my... Oh, yeah, I just... Honestly, I'm not handling things very well because I feel like if I my finger is broken, I'm done uh, because I won't come back. So that's kind of where my mental state is at this oh point. So I lose my 
cool pretty easily because I feel like I'm always one injury away. Don't say that. I, I, I mean, I hope it's fine, but it's my mentality is just like I can't get hurt, I can't get hurt, can't get hurt, and that's all I think about every time I step on the freaking court. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry, Simone. We need you out here. I love how they just have to continue the interview. Like, okay, that was her turn. Now we're going to move to you, Paris, while she's in the middle of crying. So awkward when you accidentally do something and then you're kind of feeling guilty, but like it was an accident. So what can you do? So back to Sunday, Simone is playing. Thank God we could all take a big exhale. I guess she's okay, at least for today. She's going to go for gold. And so they're taking on Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. And look at this point. Simone just trying to go soft on all angles here. She finally gets it to land. So tight game here. It's seven to six. Bar and Fudge are up by a point. This one's going to last a little while, but it's a great point. Simone tries to speed up, but gets caught in the net. Some dinking back and forth. Simone tries to speed up again. It gets caught in the net. She can't want to get over clean. Back to Dinkin. Oh, what a get from Susanna Barr. Firefight. He's going to put it away. Lob from Susanna Barr. It's taken by Paris. Wow. And then Barr Simone cleans it up. <laughs> and so Barr and Fudge got a two-point lead. It's 10 to 8. Game point on their paddle. Paris and Simone are fighting. But, man, look at Fudge coming in with a Burt. What a point to get them an 11-8 win in their first game here for gold medal. All right, so here we go. Game two. This one was awesome. And watch this ATP from Simone. She gets it to go. The backhand almost kind of trips up a little bit here, but she puts it away. So 2-1 here. Simone and Paris, they got a one-point lead against Fudge and Barr. Simone just trying to put it away. What a reset by Paris. Oh, a little windshield wiper action. Megan Fudge keeps that one in. How did she do that? And the ATP defended. Oh, what a point. So 7-3 lead for Simone and Paris. And watch this from Susanna Barr. She is just ruthless. She wants gold. So much so that when Simone falls down, she goes for her. She misses her, but oh my gosh. I kind of wish she did hit her. It would have been kind of funny. Well, as we Probably would have hurt. And so it was 10-3, to three, and Simone and Paris had game point on their paddle. They lost the opportunity. It's now 10-4. Barn Fudge serving. They get it to 10-5. Uh-oh. Are we having flashbacks to Saturday? So 10-6 here. Megan Fudge is going to hit an overhead. They're going to get it to 10-7. Slimming down this lead. So they get it to 10-8 now. Uh-oh, it's starting to slip away from them. Why can't they close? Megan Fudge is going to get to a mini firefight. And then Susanna Barr cleans up. So 10-9 now. It's one point away from tying this thing up. So Susanna Barr, Megan Fudge, they make their way back. It's 11-10 for them. They got game point on their paddle. Sorry, match point on their paddle, and they do it! They win this match. We're going to a tiebreaker to decide it. A game to 15 to see who's going to win this gold medal match. Simone and Paris definitely do not have the momentum going into it. And so Barr and Fudge, they get a 3-0 lead to start the tiebreaker matchup. And Simone and Paris are just struggling to fight back. Oh, Simone just on the ground again. You can't help but feel bad. She just gives up. She's like, I'm dead. I can't do it. I'm done. So just Evening her tan. So Simone and Paris are down by three here. It's nine to six. Bar and Fudge are just really battling, man. Getting everything. Simone and Paris just can't slim down this lead. Look at this little firefight. And slams it home. So, so we got a 10-10 game here. Tied up. Susanna Bar is going to hit one wide here, but Simone... Ends up getting it. Watch this right here. Right here. That looks like it was going to go wide. Oh, and it pulls Simone out wide, and then she can't recover. So Bar and Fudge are going to go up by 1, 11 to 10. So looking to get their lead to 2. Fudge and Bar 
Watch this. Body bag. Simone gets hit. 12-10 now for Barn Fudge. So Jardim and Todd down by three here. Very critical for them to get back in this. And watch this from Paris Todd. Misses it wide. Oh, the easy overhead. You got in front of Simone and you thought you could put it away. And you did. Way wide. And so 14-11 now for Barn Fudge. Match point on their paddle for the gold medal. Can they do it and seal the deal? After a little dink rally. Source. Let's see, can they do it? Goes down the line and oh, Paris hits one in the net and that's it. They get the gold medal off Paris and Simone. What a close match. So congrats to Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. They get the women's doubles gold medal against Simone in Paris. That's huge. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for watching. But before we get out of here, let's play a quick little round. Partner, body bag, winner off the net. Partner, body bag, winner off the net. Partner, body bag, winner off the net. Leia Jansen, winner off the net. Tyson McGuffin, winner off the net. Haley Waters, body bag, body bag. James Lee, gotta wish, body bag, body bag. Sorry, not sorry, winner off the net. Sorry, not sorry, partner. All right, partner, body bag, winner off the net. If you don't know what that is, it's a game where I'm giving three people in the pickleball world, and I have to decide which of those that I would want to partner with, who I'd want a body bag, and who I would hit a winner off the net. Sorry, not sorry style. So I got three names here, and I'm going to decide who gets what. So the first name is Jonathan Medina Alvarez. Number two, Simone Jardim. Is it Jardim or Jarjim? I feel weird saying Jarjim. I know I kind of go back and forth. I'm just going to say Jarjim because I think that's right, and it's more fun that way. And number three, Greg Dow. Oh, this is easy. Partner, definitely Greg Dow. I know he got his ass whooped this weekend in the gold medal match, double pickled, but he still seems like the funnest person on any of the tours. He's got a ton of hilarious podcast episodes that he's been a guest on. I mean, he's wearing a hat with his partner's name on it. Seems like he's a good partner. Sure, maybe he's not gonna get us a gold, but he might get us a silver, and that's good enough for me. Now, who am I gonna body bag and who am I gonna hit a winner off the net? I don't want to body bag Simone. She's already heard enough as is. And honestly, Jonathan Medina Alvarez, I want to body bag him right in the sunglasses. And then I guess I'll hit a winner off the net with Simone and watch her just kind of flop on the ground. I don't know. I still feel bad about that. I hope her hand's okay. All right. So there you have it. I'm going to partner with Greg Dow. I'm going to body bag Jonathan Medina Alvarez. And I'm going to hit a winner off the net with Simone Jardim. 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 I don't know. Sorry. Not sorry. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you haven't already, don't forget, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode. Share this with your friends that you see at Pickleball, but they don't really know anything about the pros. Maybe this is a good way to get them into it. And if you haven't gone to the Etsy store just to check it out, look what's available. I promise there's going to be something that you like here. Plus, it helps support the show, and I'll be really thankful for that. It is free shipping no matter where you live, so take advantage of it. Once again, thanks so much, everybody, for watching. We'll see you back next week for PPA. Take care. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry.